I really wish I could make this video here because it's like so nice and chic and it's like a very comfortable coffee shop. I'm gonna miss that coffee shop when I'm in Texas. I pretty much go there every day to study for school and work on these videos, you know, while I'm in Virginia because it's got such a great um, ambiance and the owners are very sweet. They've given me free drinks a few times and um, I always feel comfortable there politically even though it's college town so there's a lot of very lefty kids that come in and out and you know they talk about how awful all these like racist rednecks are um, but there's also a lot of people that are actually from Charlottesville they're very um, sweet you can really talk about whatever you want without like being treated like absolute trash so I really like that now one more thing I wanted to say before I get into the Hunter Biden story I've been thinking a lot about the amount of personal information that I want to release on my channel I know that I don't know all of you personally uh, some of you are on here anonymously some of you I'm friends with in person and um, I know that a lot of people in my personal life have been telling me for a while that I shouldn't give away too much information online about where I live, where I work, what I do, how, do, how I feel, what my political views are. If I put myself out there too much or, you know, um, someone could follow me, someone could get me fired, humiliate me, whatever. And I do think their opinion is valid. There's reason for it. Um, giving, giving away too much of your personal information can be a safety hazard or, you know, it can just make you put you outside of your element. And uh, they have been proven right many times. Like, I have had to protect myself from cyber stalkers over the years, even though I'm not even that famous. So imagine if I was more famous, what that would be like. But another thing that I realized over the years is that with me, that has been an issue anyway, regardless of whether or not I'm an online personality. In fact, maybe even more offline. I've had people following me in the street since I was a child. Um, maybe it's my personality. It's like attracting people to follow me. Maybe it's the way I look at people. It's telling them to, you know, come over and follow me, which, uh, you know, I don't mean to send that kind of message, but it does. But it's always been like that when I think about it for as long as I can remember, even in a supposedly safe neighborhood like Beverly Hills, California, I would get stopped by cops in the street, told me I shouldn't be outside because there might be this person following me, that person. And um, when I lived in Washington, D.C., there was a shirtless old man. He'd follow me literally to my door whenever he'd see me. Even here in rural Virginia, the other day I was on a walk and this also shirtless man was following me around in his truck until I walked into a shopping center and then security literally had to escort him out. So even at that strip club that I worked at in DC that I'm about to tell you about, there was this guy who successfully managed to find out who I was online, even though we were very private about our real life identities while at the club. So this problem of following me, people following me, it's always gonna be there. So I figure, and I've decided, instead of constantly running away from it and seeing it as a problem that I have to run away from and spend all my life and energy and time and paranoia just running away from, I might as well start enjoying the benefits because there are a lot of benefits. Why I started, why I started vlogging in the first place. And um, I, there are so many things that I love about it and I, I really enjoy having a space to be myself with you guys. I enjoy hearing your genuine feedback. I feel like I didn't really have that as a child because I grew up in such a private and isolated religious community so it feels good to like let it all out and be myself in public and as for security that's one of the reasons why I moved to Texas. Everybody there has a gun it seems. Personally I'm very comfortable about my precision. Honestly at this point I might be even safer online than if I didn't share everything with you guys and I didn't have your support and instead I was all alone in the world with some random person following me in the street. Back to the topic at hand. So remember 
remember that video I made about that time that I briefly worked at a strip club in Washington, D.C., that really shady strip club that tried to coerce me into dancing when I was only there to be a waitress. So go ahead and check out that video if you haven't already. They had a ton of other shady stuff going on at that club that I'm not even sure if I mentioned in that video. There were underage strippers who pretended to be 18, and uh, there were there was a lot of stealing, pickpocketing going on in there, a lot of drugs. It was it was known, it was widely known by the people who were there. Everybody was doing drugs and uh, pickpocketing from patrons. But anyway, it turns out that Hunter Biden, uh, Joe Biden's son, used to go to that same club frequently. He was also apparently super into blondes and brunettes. That was like some side note that According to some of the people who worked there, Hunter was seen smoking crack in the VIP rooms at Archibald's, a strip club about three blocks away from the White House and right across the street from the St. Regis Hotel, where he used to stay often. So that story seems to have con already exploded in the media, as everybody is suddenly concerned with Hunter Biden's personal life since his father began running for president. I don't even care about the Hunter Biden smoking crack part even though that's the title of this story, uh, because the truth is that everybody in D.C. smokes crack. Everybody in D.C. is a raging alcoholic and drug addict. If you lived in D.C., you know what I mean. That's nothing new, especially the people who go to this club, the people who work at this club. The most interesting part to me is that the story became so explosive in the media that it led to this strip club shutting down because they weren't getting business. And I am so happy about that. I'm so happy about that. I'm celebrating. That club was awful. They were awful. They're acting like they just care so much about uh, being legal. Uh, excuse me. Uh, they're telling Hunter Biden, excuse me, you know, we don't want anything illegal going on here. Come on. This club, they did so much shady stuff. They were incredibly shitty to me at a time when I was feeling desperate and broke and alone. They lied to me, tried to manipulate me into dancing. They didn't even give me my money. And I vowed that someday when I became rich, I would hire a bunch of lawyers and take that club down. Thanks to Hunter Biden, I didn't have to do that. <coughs> Nobody wants to go to a club where they're going to out you to the media. You're going to a club to like unwind. Archibald's was gross and shady and dirty enough to begin with, even without the virus floating around. Uh, just take a look at some of the reviews here. They're insane. Then here you see the managing partner, James Ritter, proudly telling the media that he told Hunter that nothing illegal can go on in here. But by the way, they clearly bent their own rules when it came to accepting his credit cards that didn't match his ID and then throwing him under the bus for publicity. Now, I know that the former vice president's son's life is very fascinating on its own. Even without him being the son of a presidential candidate, there's just so much going on so many relationships and baby mamas and strippers and family drama and someday there's totally going to be a soap opera about this. Trust me, I find it fascinating too and you already know where I stand politically. But the truth is that I don't have any feelings of animosity towards this guy. I don't care that his dad's running for president. I don't have any desire to take him down just because of that and I just, I, I just think it's a guy some it's just a guy with a lot of issues and I think it's unfair and I feel bad that so many people are targeting him instead of his dad who's the one running for president. I'm hoping that by putting this video out there in addition to maybe making you laugh about this small world connection to my videos and maybe also rejoicing the downfall of a strip club that has been taking advantage of underage girls for so many years I could add a Hunter Biden story in the mix that is maybe a little less heavy and hostile. So that's it. Some of you might have even been to that club. I know my friends have been there, you know, for fun. I almost drove from Virginia to D.C. just so I can get a shot of the club, like, not being there or the sign coming down or something like that. But then I was like, forget it. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like this video to let me know that I'm improving my videos and subscribe to my channel. Turn on the notifications by the way so you will know when I post the next video. And definitely let me know if there's anything that you want me to talk about like in particular because I want to talk about it because 
I find that the people on my YouTube channel are a lot more my speed and you guys are a lot more in line with kind of what the things that I want to talk about than let's say the people on Twitter who a lot of them are just like there to troll or like I don't know it just doesn't feel as personal so um looking forward to hearing from you guys and see you guys next week bye